Okay, so we're going to look then at how a wave cut notch and platform, like the one we just saw in the photo, uh, can be created. Uh, again, we're going to keep using this PEST structure, processes, explanation, sequence of how it's formed, and the time length of the terminology that we can use uh, to explain the formation. Like with most physical tools, I think the best way to do it is actually just do it through a series of numbered diagrams, making sure that your statements, if you can do lots of them, are numbered to make sure it's really clear what you're talking about. What we've got is, uh, in the first stage, is a cliff. Okay. That cliff at its base is being eroded by the sea between two really important marks, the high water mark and the low water mark. Now, we could just get away with using the term erosion, but we want to make sure we're pushing ourselves. We want to focus on this high-level terminology. So we're going to try and use some more specific types of erosion, like hydraulic action, uh, to explain what's going on. So our first stage in our answering, nothing wrong with drawing an exam like this in the question diagram like this in the exam. Remember, just because there's lines doesn't mean that you can't draw a diagram to help in your explanation. So we may say erosion processes. such as hydraulic action, erode the base of the cliff between the high and low watermark. Over time, what can happen is that continued process of hydraulic action, uh, corrosion, abrasion, is going to lead to severe levels of erosion in between those high and low watermark. There isn't going to be any erosion occurring above the high watermark, uh, apart from the occasional ones during large storm events, um, where maybe the, the waves are really crashing high up the cliff. That, over time, that continued erosion is actually going to create a dent or a uh, sort of notch in the cliff between the high and low watermark and that's what we refer to as the wave cut notch. So we can say over time, getting that T in there from the pest uh, structure, the continued erosion, we can put by hydraulic action, etc. Might as well get that terminology in again, leads to a, uh, an indent between the high watermark and low watermark that we refer to as a wave cut notch really important that we've got that understanding here. It said, you can label that as well to emphasize it, that this is our wave cut notch. And what we've therefore got, okay, is the first part of our sequence. Now, if you think back to the stuff that we did on waterfalls, you might be able to start thinking about what's gonna be the next stage, and it is quite logical. So the next stage, again, see the word that I'm numbering my diagrams, it shows the understanding of sequence that we're trying to focus on in our PEST structure. Um, you know, what's quite logically is going to happen is that area of cliff directly above the wave cut notch is now going to be unsupported, you're taking away its base. Eventually, that wave cut notch is going to become so large that the area of cliff directly above it is unsupported and is going to collapse into the sea. This means that the position of the cliff is actually going to move backwards, okay, leading to the process of cliff retreat. In certain places along the Dorset coastline that we look at for our case study, this is occurring at a really rapid rate of around two meters per year at Barton on Sea. Mm -hmm. What's then going to happen is that the cliff position is going to realign itself. We now won't have a notch anymore, but the process will happen again and repeat. <coughs> The not, a new notch will be created, and again, this part of the cliff here will be unsupported and collapse, 
and so on. And we will have a repetition of this cycle. Well, getting that into the exam, the idea that this cycle repeats itself. We still haven't actually though explained how a wave cut platform is created. Now the wave cut platform is a smooth area of seabed directly in front of the cliff, can be quite often exposed at low tides, it's very flat, okay? and it's actually created due to the collapsed material from the cliff. When that material collapses and finds its way onto the seabed, okay, it's in that area of sort of breaking waves, and the motion of the waves coming in and out of the shore okay, is going to move that material backwards and forwards along the seabed directly in front of the cliffs. Okay. That backwards and forwards motion is going to result in a really high rate of abrasion. And abrasion remembers that kind of sandpapering effect uh, type of erosion. And that sandpapering effect is therefore going to create a very smooth, flat area of seabed directly in front of the cliffs that we refer to as a wave cut platform. So we could write that up maybe in a little bit more detail than I've done here. I'm trying to fill it in uh, onto the camera screen. But eventually the sectional cliff above the notch will be unsupported. Again, that term eventually referring to the idea of t passing of time. It's not going to be a quick process and collapse, causing the cliff to retreat. This process will constantly repeat. Important to get that in. It's not just going to happen once. It's going to happen again and again, leading to that cliff moving further and further back. The collapsed material will be washed back and forth by the waves, creating a smooth wave cut platform due to abrasion. I've got that word in there, abrasion, that terminology. It's a really important part of the explanation and the sequencing.